Today's streamer is a, a woman. She's 25 years old, about to enter graduate school, and she has entitled her dream Sulphur Beach. And here's the dream. I was walking to the beach with a large group of people. It felt like a school trip, maybe. There was this pervading idea that going to the beach would be educative, maybe in some spiritual or intellectual way. We got to the beach, which was completely yellow-gray in tone. The sand, the sky, the water. There was such a strong sulfur smell that I nearly vomited. I saw others walking around, bobbing into the water. The smell was too strong for me. I turned away from the water toward a wooden plank that was on the sand and saw many small bugs crawling on it. Another woman around my age and I left the beach and walked toward a cabin. We entered the cabin and idly chatted. I forget about what, but it was friendly and pleasant. We agreed that we wouldn't go back to the beach. However, I did go back eventually and with a large group walked to the shoreline and entered the water. I ducked my head underneath. To my surprise, I could no longer smell the sulfur. I opened my eyes underwater, expecting to be illuminated by some beautiful sight or newfound knowledge. It was just cloudy, that same gray-yellow color. I was slightly disappointed, but not that surprised. I bobbed my head above water and noticed the sulfur smell again, but it was much less strong. For context, our dreamer says, I was recently accepted to graduate school, a lifelong goal of mine, only to realize I became depressed after my acceptance. I've also been enduring some lack of passion and ambivalence in my relationship of seven years. I found myself extremely attracted to another person and felt some guilt about this. The main feelings in the dream, she says, were disgust at the sulfur, sulfur smell, gentle kindness and comfort with my companion at the cabin, and satisfaction mixed with other things. So, with this to go on, what do we make of the dream of Sulphur Beach? Um, just one small thing, because uh, in Virginia there actually is a, uh, <laughs> a little resort town that's been there, I don't know, for a well over a hundred years, Sulphur Springs. Oh, for and, heaven's uh, sake. There, there's this um, healing attribution that people bathe in sulfur, sulfurous hot springs, and they receive a kind of value in that. And from a purely um, scientific standpoint, sulfur has um, antifungal and antimicrobial benefits. So I think that uh, certainly in the ancient ah. world, you would have had, God knows, you know, any number of kind of skin disorders, and soaking in a hot sulfurous bath could actually have healing properties in as much it could treat some yeah. of those things. So I think there's an old tradition of, of tolerating that rotten egg smell if, if you have... Um, credible evidence that it's going to help you in some way. And it's a big symbol in uh, alchemy as well, is it not? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what sulfur is, uh, stands for is heat. Am I correct about that? Yes, I think that when sulfur burns, it has a particularly hot um, flame that generates very bright, very hot, very stinky. <laughs> so the uh, I don't know whether she says there's much heat there I mean I'm fantasizing because of the hot springs but I don't know that she says anything about warmth yeah uh, no it's the stink it's the rotten egg stink mm -hmm. part uh, mm -hmm. for her at the beach um, and it feels like maybe a school trip so uh, she's just been accepted to graduate school, and uh, so she is on a school trip <laughs> in her waking world life as a grad student, 
But I can imagine that that also takes us back to the realm of of younger years and what is it like to be a student again? Uh, she's 25. She's been, you know, an adult. And uh, when studentship is evoked, uh, it calls up a, a certain status of uh, the good news is you're going to receive and be fed, you know, knowledge and education and wisdom and all those wonderful things. But um, hierarchically, you're one down uh, because there's wherever there's a student, there's a teacher. So it calls up adult-child uh, dynamics. And, and, and perhaps that's part of her ambivalence and the depression that it, seemed, it might mm-hmm. seem inflating initially to be chosen, uh, that you fought your way to get accepted into the grad school. It seems mm-hmm. wonderful. Then the other side of it is you are subjected in a kind of parent-child way to the the system, the teachers, the demands, the assessment process. Right, right. And uh, that can bring up a lot of ambivalent feelings, uh, particularly returning to school later in life. Mm -hmm. There is a real transition and a real um, ambiguity about having this as a lifelong goal Mm -hmm. in whatever discipline she has chosen. But obviously something I always wanted to get a graduate degree in X or Y. Mm -hmm. And now uh, that the dream is here, it also entails a kind of regression uh, to student status. Uh, it, it can look and feel uh, very much that way. But um, I want to go back to, the, to just the dream, that this odd, odd beach, uh, which is very murky in color. I mean, uh, these colors, yellow and gray, um, you know, sound, sound sort of sickly, don't they? Um, you know, that, uh, and the strong sulfur smell, and she's at the beach. Uh, So other people are walking around, and they're bobbing in the water. Uh, Other people seem not to be affected uh, by by the situation, by the the setting uh, that she's she's in. Um, Then then we have the plank and the little bugs crawling on it, which often, I think, multiplicities and multiplicities of things like worms and bugs, insects, um, are are kind of primal feelings that are diffuse. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. They haven't been consolidated into a single image, but just something uh, way below uh, the level of of consciousness that is hard to connect with. Uh, She befriends a woman. They enter a cabin. She feels... um, the kindness and comfort of having a positive shadow figure here. Uh, And then she goes back to the beach. Ducks her head underwater, could no longer smell the sulfur. Uh, And then she says, I expected to be, I think this is really informative, I expected to be illuminated by some beautiful sight or newfound knowledge. But, darn it, it just was cloudy, the same gray-yellow color. And she says, I was disappointed but not surprised. Uh, So as she gets into the water, the sulfur, the stink decreases. The colors stay the same. So I wonder if, you know, it's... The, the goal of going to the beach, of going, getting into graduate school, is not, not quite as uh, transformative. <laughs> right. It, it's, I it love the metaphor. Me. Like people yeah. ask you, like, how was graduate school? It was one endless sulfurous beach. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is such a fabulous <laughs> way. 
I'm describing going back to graduate school, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th- th- it's not absolutely transformative. Uh, you know, I was shown into a beautiful room filled with ancient uh, illuminated manuscripts. And uh, it's like, oh, okay, oh, it's going to be... Um, yeah. It's going to be a walk on the beach, and Rotten some of eggs it's for gonna, everyone. <laughs> some of it's going to stink. <laughs> Absolutely, and um, <laughs> what I think is is perhaps helpful is that um, there are plenty of other parts of the psyche that are adapting. They're in the water. They seem <laughs> untroubled yeah. by it. They're coping yeah. at the very least, or maybe able to receive some benefit from the sulfurous mm-hmm. water. I think it's interesting that when you look deeper, you don't notice the stinkiness quite so much. Mm-hmm. Because yes. under it's cloudy, you know, meaning yeah. that there's stuff to discover, there's stuff that isn't quite clear, but at least you're looking below the surface of things. Right. And there's work right. to be done to clear it up but it's not quite mm-hmm. so rank if we go deep. But on the surface, you know, it's, it's definitely kind of stinky. Yeah. The other thing that um, is just true about uh, sulfurous odors is that when protein uh, degrades, it releases sulfur, um, sulfur oxide. So globulin, which is a part of most bodies, animal bodies, human bodies, as the body decays, the glob- uh, globulin molecules kind of break open and they release various uh, compounds of sulfur. One, that mm-hmm. tells us as humans, this smell is bad, I probably should stay away from it, because um, disgust is a primal emotion. Yeah. Infants feel disgust, which keeps yeah. them alive, so they, they know to pull away from things that could be damaging or dangerous for them. So. There's also something that could be breaking down. Again, it could be the yeah. smell of the, of the rotting inflation, mm-hmm. you know, that uh, I just yeah. thought it was going to be so glorious, and that's just rotting right in front of me, and it uh-huh. smells bad. Well, you're bringing up something I think that might uh, be relevant to the dreamer's life, mm-hmm. uh, uh, that she says, uh, she became depressed after her acceptance. Yeah. So, you know, we're sort of wondering, you know, could the sulfurous beach and all the rest of it be like the letdown after, you know, what if the dream comes true and then you wake up the next morning and you still have to brush your teeth and <laughs> eat breakfast? <laughs> um, and yeah. then she says she's been enduring some lack of passion and ambivalence in her relationship of seven years, and she found herself attracted to someone else. And I wonder if that relates to what you're saying about the sulfur, of that it's um, an element in things breaking down. Oh, I love that. So the breaking down of the old relationship. Mm. And as you said earlier, sulfur is uh, connected to the calcinatio in alchemy because when it's set on fire, it burns very hotly. So the sulfur could be part of the heat of the new relationship as well as the decay of the old. It's interesting that yeah. depending on how it's, how it's discovered, it, it can be so different. And that's true about the psyche, isn't it? That, mm-hmm. um, that it, we're just so differently affected in various ways. Mm. So I think that um, what's good is that she tolerates it in the dream. She vomits. It's rough on her. It's not appealing. It's hard to digest, right? Because when you vomit, you're like tossing things out Mm. of your belly that your body's like, I don't, I don't want to keep this in there. But, you know, Mm. she's able to kind of keep herself together. And and the dream gives her a couple of good uh, little tips about what's working here. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing that is working. Uh, is is going back to this cabin, right. and uh, she says in the dream, idly chatted uh, with with the woman, but it was friendly and pleasant. So I would kind of build on that and say, mm-hmm. 
get support. Oh. Uh, go out to coffee with a friend. Mm. Uh, go out to dinner. Um, talk on the phone. Uh, maintain those seemingly, you know, sort of casual, chit chatty kinds of relationships. They are, uh, they're relationships you already have. They are uh, trails through, uh, through an unknown and new terrain. Mm -hmm. And the other is that things are better when she co goes back to the beach mm -hmm. and uh, puts her head under the water. Right. That when you get under the surface of things, that helps too. It's a very homey dream. There's nothing <laughs> glorious about it. Right. And I love the, her final just few sentences. You know, I went into grad school expecting to be illuminated by some beautiful <laughs> sight and newfound knowledge. And what I found was just kind of cloudy and grayish yellow. I'm feeling kind of disappointed, but not surprised. <laughs> and you know, then when I resurfaced, it's not quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> and so, welcome to grad school. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And I, I dare to say, there will be illumination, too. It's been a lifelong goal. And yes. um, new beginnings, beginnings are hard. Beginnings are just hard. And so are endings. And you may find that the companionship that you discover being back in grad school may be the surprising, wonderful thing. And I know I felt yeah. that training with you and Lisa. That's that true, too. You go in thinking, oh, it's going to become a wizard of a Jungian. And there's all of these life-changing relationships that you carry away. And, mm. and that is, for me, was equally yeah. as valuable as any information I might have had. It, so she might be surprised at the friendships okay. that she carries back. So we will wish our dreamer well on this new part of her life journey. Yes, we will.